Hey guys, I'm Gene Della president of Audioholics. And I'm Hugo Rivera, Vice President of Marketing. Gene, another big topic over here that we've been asked to cover is the following. How to increase system dynamic range. Mm. And before you cover that, I think for, for our newbie audience out there as well, let's go ahead and discuss what that means. Well, in layman terms, dynamic range is just the ratio of how loud to how soft something plays, mm -hmm. okay? So when you're listening to, let's say, orchestral music, mm -hmm. it'll have really low passages, it'll have you know really quiet times, and all of a sudden it'll just blast Bam. out, mm -hmm. right? Well, if you don't have good dynamic range in your system, you're gonna miss some of that. Understood, okay, perfect. So we have five steps to mm. actually make sure that we increase. Is this like an AA type of program? It's a five step program. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not 10 step. <laughs> this is the AH. Audioholics, I five like step that. program. You we see, need to, we need to coin that term. The AH five step program to increasing dynamic range, my friends. I love it. I'll tell you what. I'll give you step one. So for step one, you need to control your background. You know, and that's a problem. Uh, people that regularly watch our videos know we have a problem ourselves. We have an issue with controlling that stuff. our background noise in our videos. <laughs> you know what it is? Because we like having a lot of air conditioning on yes. and we like keeping cool and uh, that's that's a big thing actually. Unfortunately in my room, I you know my air conditioning system is quite loud when it's on mm -hmm. and what I did was I put a very insulated door where the handler is mm -hmm. and it's, it's a solid wood door and it's got about four inches thick of padding yep. all around it. I cut the noise floor down 10 dB. Mm -hmm. So when I measured it with an SPL meter before with the pocket door, versus the solid door with the acoustic foam in it, 10 dB lower, that is perceived as half as loud, okay? Right. So that really, I don't hear my handler anymore, but I still do hear my vents when they're on. And unfortunately, you know, if I wanna really listen, what I do before I go into the room is I crank the air down like mm -hmm. five degrees colder than normal. Mm -hmm. And I just make that room like a like an igloo. Yes. And then when I get in and I do critical listening, I shut the air condition off entirely. And I got about a good hour of listening before it starts becoming uncomfortable. This is Florida. It's so. Florida, yeah. And I'm and I'm upstairs, so all the heat comes up as the heat <laughs> totally. rises. But lowering your HVAC noise is a game changer. Mm -hmm. Because think about it now, if you've got all this background noise going on, you gotta turn the volume up on your stereo totally. way louder to compensate. What happens when you turn it louder? You're using more amplifier power, you're driving the speakers harder, which can lead to distortion, and mm -hmm. you're driving your ears harder. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, you know, you gotta not only control the HVAC noise, but you gotta control your room acoustics too. You don't wanna listen, you don't wanna listen in an echoic chamber, as we've always said. Right. But you don't wanna listen to it in a stadium either. Yeah, exactly. You don't want too much echo. It becomes very mm -hmm. distracting, becomes very fatiguing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Man, if you've ever been into one of these state-of-the-art rooms, like a THX room, the noise floor, I think, is like 20 dB or something. It's crazy low. Incredible. You walk into a room like that, and it's like, it's not as bad as being in an anechoic chamber, but it's so quiet in that room, so you'll hear a pin drop. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, the noise floor in this room, when the air conditioning's not on, it's like in the 35 to 40 dB mm -hmm. range, so it's very quiet. Right. It's funny because, thanks to that quietness, that's why when the AC comes up, you totally hear it. Yes. You know, so that's a... Uh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Like if you were in a normal room, like downstairs where we don't have any acoustic treatments in the room and it's just tile floors and, and walls and, you know, glass, you don't really notice when the no, AC's on it sounds like Yeah, exactly. It's kind of, kind of like subconsciously you hear it, but you're not conscious of it. Correct. You know. So, so. control your noise in mm -hmm. your room, guys. Step one. Step two. Position the... Listener closer to the speakers, and I'm sorry, I don't have my glasses, I don't have my contacts either, so I'm having yeah, issues you reading. Know, <laughs> that's a good point too, because I've been to a lot of people's rooms where they have the front speakers all the way up against the mm -hmm. back wall, and then their couch is all the way at the back wall, or the other wall, the opposite wall. So they're 20, 30 feet away from these, and they have little four inch two-way speakers. Why can't I hear it loud? Yeah, I wonder why. What they don't realize <laughs> is the inverse square law is their enemy. Mm -hmm. In anechoic environments, every doubling of distance, you lose 6 dB of, of sound pressure. That's a problem. Okay? But in a real room, it's more like 3 or 4 dB. But still, that's a lot, man. That's a lot of power that you're losing, a lot of output that you're losing. 
get your seats closer if you can, especially if you do a lot of two channel listening. You know, follow our ratio. Marshall did a great video on pl speaker placements and he talks Link about- below. Yeah, he talks about how far apart the speaker should be and how far you should be sitting from away from the speakers. Yeah, that's a great video. The closer you can bring your listening seats to at least your main three LCR speakers, the better, because that's the real most important sound. Most of the sound is focused on their front sound stage, and then the surrounds are typically ambience. Mm -hmm. So get your listeners closer to the front sound stage when you can. You reduce your 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 uh, direct your reflected sound. You get more of the direct sound. Is a higher ratio of direct sound. It's just everything is better when you yeah. do that. Yeah. Plus, you you use less power from your system, right. and you drive your speakers a little bit lower. You know, it's, it saves the speaker. You know, it saves everything. So, yeah. Get closer, people. Step number three, use bass management and multi-sub. And we talk about this, God, I'm like blue in the face, but I'm gonna <laughs> keep saying it, man. <laughs> it's worth it. It's totally worth it to do this. Yeah, you know, if you say things enough times, it sinks in. So yes, bass management is key. Mm -hmm. I, again, I've been to people's houses, they don't even know what bass management is. Mm -hmm. They think it has something to do with like a fish or something. <laughs> You know, like a bass. <laughs> like a bass. <laughs> yeah. I'm not making fun. I'm just, come on. It, it, right. it is kind of funny when you see that people just, they get all this great technology and they don't know how to use it. And it's sad, but, you know, we try to educate. But yes, bass management will save dynamics of your speakers. Don't have speakers with little woofers trying to produce bass that they can't do. Mm -hmm. you're, you're overdriving the speakers. You're overtaxing the amplifiers now to produce that sound the full range sound even though it's you're not going to hear the output out of the speaker you're wasting power manage your speakers use multi-sub every time you add 4 db of dynamic range to your subwoofer channel it's it's perceived by the ear as twice the loudness it's not like the 10 db at the mid to high frequencies but you know our hearing is different at low mm -hmm. frequencies where we don't need as much power at low frequencies to get the more perceived loudness. Right. So anytime you use multi-sub and bass management, you're automatically increasing your system dynamic range. That's wonderful. So my, it's just, there are just so many benefits, and I'll go ahead and link up some of our videos in the description mm -hmm. so, that, uh, f f so that the new people that come to the channel can go ahead and benefit from that knowledge. Um, the next step, Gene, which is uh, step four, is to sh choose higher sensitivity speakers. Yeah, you know, a lot of people are looking to, they want this hulking amplifier, they want a thousand watt amplifier. And you gotta look, it's better first, even though amplifier power is cheap, try to choose speakers that are more sensitive. Mm -hmm. You know, if you choose a speaker that's 86 dB of sensitivity versus one that's 92, B, 92 dB sensitivity, mm -hmm you would have to use four times the amplifier power of the least efficient speaker to get that same output of the higher sensitivity speaker. Mm -hmm. So a 100 watt amp versus a 400 watt amp, it's more manageable to use 100 watts times seven than 400 watts times seven if you used higher efficiency speakers. Totally, super important. And finally, Eugene, step five, which is kind of like, it's kind of like common sense, but a lot of people mm. lack that sometimes. Uh, listen with care, you know? We added this step for the lawyers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because we don't want to tell people, listen loud, and then 10 years later they have hearing damage, and they try to sue us for talking about increasing your dynamic range. I could see a TV commercial, you know? If you have listened to the Audioholic videos, and yes. you have experienced loss of hearing, <laughs> call us. Class action lawsuit. <laughs> There may be big money for you. Yeah. <laughs> Again, guys, if you lower the noise floor in your room, you position yourself closer to the speakers, you don't have to go and crank it up, and you control your acoustics in your room, listen with care, my friends. Totally. Listen, listen for a lifetime. Okay? Yeah, totally worth it. I mean, it's, it's no different than weight training, and I always bring weight training analogies mm -hmm. here, you know. I always tell my clients, you know, if you're going to weight train, do so safely, use a weight that you can easily manage because here the purpose is to go ahead and use a weight that that will change your body right. without injuring you you want to train forever it's the same thing with audio okay if you blow your ears up today and you're you know looking for the most powered hearing aid tomorrow mm -hmm. there's there's no purpose in that it's like there goes your your listening ears hearing you know? damage is cumulative and it's progressive mm -hmm. and by the way back to the weight training don't use bench shirts <laughs> Please don't wear the poofy socks and don't use the bench shirts. Honestly, if you're not a power lifter, all of this stuff is out. I mean, honestly, all you need to do is to choose a weight, 
to put tension in the muscle and that's it yeah honest to god so anyways and, hopefully this and helps. to make the analogy back to the uh, amplifiers to the audio realm be careful with a lot of these these pro amplifiers that claim they're 4,000 watts or 8,000 watts and they weigh eight pounds or six pounds. Beware. Beware, my friends. Because yeah. very conditional how they rate the power of these amplifiers. So don't fall for that hook, line, and sinker. A powerful okay. ta amp is typically a heavy amp as well, you know? Yeah, I mean, there are exceptions. There's Class right. D with SMPS power supplies and all that. But in general speaking terms, don't get hooked on the numbers, man. Know how these things are rated. We talk about this all the time. Okay, more power is not always better. It's again, mass without class. Mass without class. And again, like I always do, I'll link up more of these uh, related videos in the description below. So be sure to look at the description of our videos because we're loading them up with some valuable information that we have already covered that is gonna really educate you on this subject and uh, put you out there as an expert, you know? Yeah. So. Anyways, I think we covered everything. I think we have our five-step Bodyholics uh, guide here. <laughs> it's a recovery <laughs> program, too. <laughs> and with that said, you know, if you like this video, click like below. Comment. Let us know what you think. Shoot us some other video topics because we're basically covering what you guys send us. And uh, don't forget to share this with your friends. Share the wealth. Don't keep the knowledge to yourself. With that said, until next time, keep, keep listening. listening. And do it safely. Thank you.